Hey and welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve and today we're looking at a coffee and kilowatts for 2023. Here's what we're seeing around the issues of models, charging, public infrastructure, all the kind of things that affect EV adoption and what we expect to see over the next 12 months or so. So let's jump in, grab yourself a coffee and we'll resume coffee and kilowatts for 2023. So in terms of EV adoption, we're not looking too bad here. We're at uh, 6% as the year switches over from 2022 to 23 as uh, a nation in the US. And there are obviously hot spots like California, uh, the East Coast, New York state. And as you would expect in the places where you can gain a little more from the electric vehicles, where the distances between cities are shorter, where there are uh, ZEV mandates in place and states have followed the efficiency and emissions rules. That's where we end up in this kind of uh, higher adoption option patchwork of the coasts being pretty popular for electric vehicles then patches as you go across the country in texas colorado obviously a good chunk of that is tesla you've got a, a significant share of the market there that is uh, the tesla model y and the model 3 especially with the price drops recently and, and you've got uh, ev tax incentives and credits and uh, a whole kind of bunch of moving targets there so tough to analyze for the year ahead although we obviously hope that will spike ev adoption one way or another but the bigger pieces are really at least from our perspective how it's going to impact the public charging infrastructure, what we're going to see in terms of expansion there. Will the National Electric Vehicle Initiative uh, start to roll out its funds pretty quickly, or are we thinking more 2024 for those? But overall, you can see the trend moving very quickly towards EVs now. It's kind of on that uh, uptick and more interest spiking as we started to get more models on the road. Another vehicle class, another vehicle segment being added to that has certainly helped electric vehicles come into the conversation there. It's the Rivian R1T, the Ford F-150 Lightning onto the roads, albeit still pretty expensive premium price trucks. Um, we have the Chevy Silverado EV coming up. You've got Ram uh, announcing their EV truck. So there's a bunch of options in the pipeline here and uh, hopefully we'll start to see a little more competition on that side as well. So for North America at least, EV adoption seems to be right on that uh, tipping point. You expect to see the number of models and uh, the availability hopefully increase as the supply chains ease up a little bit. Tesla's pricing should also help people get in to uh, Model Ys and Model 3s a little bit easier. So if that happens, uh, we could see some significant action in 2023. Certainly Tesla is the best position to start ramping production and really hit uh, the next level. And then just the sheer number of manufacturers that you have, you know, those who've been sitting on the sidelines before, a bunch of them are starting to dip their toes in. So as we start to see the ones that had already participated, your Hyundai's, your Kia's, your Ford's, your GM's, getting up to a higher number of models and better production numbers, plus some of the ones that have dragged their feet even, they'll all add to that kind of pool of moving up towards the town of 10% mark which is, uh, you know, again, not a huge amount of the market, but shows the kind of inexorable rise and uh, how we're getting to those numbers of greater EV adoption over the next few years. 2023, I don't think will be the year it kind of tips up, but you'll definitely see a solid growth this year. And hopefully those supply chain problems behind us means that 2024, 2025, we can be talking about really uh, spiking that uh, EV adoption chart to hockey stick growth. And so as a neat transition here ourselves uh, for our own 2023 uh, plans at least, the 2020 Bolt EV here will go back off uh, lease this month. It's done about coming up on 35,000 miles. Been a really good uh, workhorse for us first doing the road trips. It's baptism of fire was down to Texas on a nascent kind of CCS charging network. So it did a good job there. And since then we put another 30,000 miles on it also. It's doing uh, road trips over the first couple of years and then taking a backseat over the last year. So this Bolt EV for us will be moving on, but at the same time we have the Ionic 5. More increased charging capabilities, the better road tripping, the larger car. So it gives us a platform at least in 2023 and beyond to uh, kind of assess the charging network, push it to its limits as much as we've got at the moment and uh, move up beyond the Bolt as a solid kind of workhorse EV that really served us well for six years now and uh, move into the next phase of our EV adoption. 
Okay, so moving into the Ionic 5 here for our look at future models and other things that will affect the future of EVs. I think one of the factors of uh, 2022 that will still continue into 2023 is the limited supply. You've heard stories of people trying to get hold of the likes of the Ionic 5, uh, the EV6, plenty of the newer EVs that have not been produced in great enough numbers to satisfy demand. This is despite all the other things that, uh, you know, people kind of postulate as holding up EV adoption, um, charging experience experiences, too few models, limitations on range, whatever uh, people will say. The biggest thing holding up electric vehicle adoption in the United States, at least at the moment, is the limited supply of the EVs that people want. So even over to Tesla, although you may now see uh, reports of limited demand and needing to drop prices because of that, debatable whether or not that is actually demand uh, driven or whether they're just trying to position themselves in the market as more of a, not an affordable player, but certainly one that is uh, competing not way above the price levels of the likes of the Ionic 5, EV6, Mustang Mach-E, those kind of things, but at the same price level or in some cases lower now with Model Y's uh, being accessible in that forty-five dollars to $50,000 bracket. So already in 2023 we've seen that Tesla Premium come down a little bit and put itself more into the, uh, the same marketplace as a lot of those other new EVs that have come out. So I guess my summary of the EV adoption part for this year at least will be uh, next for same as the first it's going to be kind of more of the same uh, manufacturers trying to ramp up production numbers get production into the US uh, battery plants rationalizing supply chains all of the kind of things that are going to help them really ramp up numbers as we get closer to 2024 2025 but I don't think those are going to come online quick enough for a majority of the manufacturers to really um, crank up production of existing models or even get these new models out you know there's going to be a lot of announcements certainly we're seeing a uh, much bigger acceleration from the likes of GM on their uh, lineups of EVs with the Equinox EV, Blazer EV, Silverado EV. So I think you will see a lot of those models start to get into the uh, conversations about what to buy as we reach closer to 2024, but I don't think many of them are going to be available en masse uh, this year. And then as far as the underlying technology, I mean, we've seen some pretty big strides, uh, certainly in the non-Tesla side of things over the last couple of years, moving forward to a place where we're regularly hitting 300 mile range EVs. The fast charging has clearly improved. We've moved from the kind of 50 to 100 bracket to uh, 150 plus being really the target that most manufacturers will want to meet if they're even gonna compete with the likes of Tesla, Hyundai, Kia and the more expensive models that you can get out there on the Rivians, the Lucids, all that good stuff. And the underlying platforms are starting to be ground up EV based. You know, you have the EGMP, you have GM's Ultium coming in slowly but surely. Um, there's a bunch of the platforms that have uh, been built for, you know, more models. So we're going to start to see the initial models that we've had be uh, joined by some siblings and have other uh, cars and EV models available on those newer technology platforms. But I think it would be nice, and this may be more hopeful, probably not going to be here in 2023, but it would be nice to see a focus, a return to focus on efficiency to get those larger ranges, really just ramping up the number of uh, cells in the battery pack. So you have a larger capacity battery, maybe up to 90, 100 kilowatt hours in some uh, larger EVs like your Marquis and your e-trons. Not all of that being available but that's broadly how they're getting to that 300 mile number you know is having close to 100 all you really need to do is hit that kind of three miles per kilowatt hour um, average and that's not a huge ask for most uh, medium kind of size crossovers even with big heavy battery packs but it's not really a sustainable way to go forward ideally you'd be increasing energy density starting to do more with the size of pack you've got so i do think the kind of tesla hyundai kia 75 80 kilowatt hours is a nice level to be at um, Tesla seems to make a bit more of that, but the, um, the likes of the Ionic 5, the Mustang Mach-E, not super efficient vehicles, and uh, you're either, you know, sacrificing a little bit of range so that the all-wheel drive um, Ionic 5 is closer to 250, which was much the same as our Bolt EV, but for the fast charging being a big game changer in road tripping for this. And then the Mustang Mach-E and the likes of that being up at 300, but again, because of those larger battery packs being able to hold more energy, and then that just means longer charge time 
sometimes, you know, a percentage point of something that's uh, close to 100 kilowatt hours versus 77 kilowatt hours in this car. It's obviously more energy to put in, that extends charging times, and if you have lightning fast charging times, that can fix that, but it's still, we've kind of moved to where we focus on the charging being a ripper and getting you back on the road quickly, but if we can uh, focus on the energy side and efficiency side, making more of the batteries that we have, it not only makes those cars a little bit more affordable because you can use a smaller pack, you're not paying quite so much for the extra kilowatt hours of that battery pack, but you're also paying less for the owner when you're charging. You don't need to fill it up as high to get to that kind of 250, 300 mile range. So that's not something we've thought hugely about in this, uh, you know, relatively inefficient uh, electric vehicle because we have the free charging with Electrify America, but at some point that will come down to, you know, be more expensive to charge. You'll have DC fast charging sessions, which go into the 15, 20, 30 dollar range and it starts to be more of a focus on uh, miles per kilowatt hour as you would have with uh, efficient gasoline vehicles in miles per gallon. You'll want an EV that uh, is more efficient and is able to make best use of the energy you put into it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. I doubt it initially this year. It's probably just going to be more of the same throw large battery packs at things if you want to incre increase range. But we do eventually see that technology at the top with the likes of the Lucid Air kind of start to trickle down. So hopefully they're smaller, lighter motors, their better use of that energy that's in the pack will translate to more efficient EVs and ones that go further. So we start to hit that 350, 400 mile range and EVs that can hopefully get back to kind of 3.5, four miles per kilowatt hour as the baseline for efficiency. Over to you, what are your thoughts on the uh, EV charging that's going to come this year? Do you think, as we do, it's going to be more of an initiative for 2024 and we're in for a little bit of a uh, step back before we can step forward this year? Um, are you more optimistic? Do you think that the charging networks are just going to get their stuff together, everybody's going to align, and we're going to push into some brave new world of uh, perfectly reliable charging and uh, no problems at all? Seems against the grain, but, uh, you know, I would certainly love to hear someone kind of be putting some reasons to that kind of thing. Uh, what models are you excited for this year? Uh, what technology do you hope comes out? Do you want to see radical new designs like the Aptera? Do you want to see us get into the three row big uh, SUVs? Or would you rather see a trend back down to smaller vehicles, efficient vehicles? And how do you think Tesla will fare? Is this price drop that's just been uh, announced something that is uh, purely to get themselves back into that lower part of the market and compete with all the models that are coming out? Or do they have a demand issue where they need to put themselves in the conversation again with an aging lineup? As always, interested in your views, leave some comments down below. We'll have a good conversation and hopefully keep the coffee and kilowatts rolling for the rest of the year. Thanks for watching as always and talk to you in the next one. Cheers.